<laughs> okay, so um, developing more compassion for others, and it was a uh, question was phrased really nicely, like, you know, even if I'm in a high state, I mean, how do you? It's like having compassion when other people are really attached to their stuff, um, and they're getting traumatized. Well, for me, the thing, of course, is I really like um, I, I really like what goes on in um, uh, Hawkins talks about there's two major spiritual pathways and they can be both, of course they can both be mixed there's the pathway of the mind as a pathway of the heart the pathway of the mind <clears throat> is more like self-inquiry non-duality it's like uh, it's very much transcending the, that everything is an illusion and all positionalities and seeing that there's an observer or witness or just letting it all go and you go inwards through the mind uh, and then there's the pathway of the heart the pathway of the heart traditionally is selfless service uh, so the Christian saints also I think 12-step um, groups which <coughs> teach you uh, to sponsor other people and uh, have no vested interest in yourself and just help them recover from addictions. So I think it's a really, it's almost like if you were just to do that full time, you'd be just like a Christian saint. It's like just um, helping people and being of service non-stop. And don't worry, you know, and you're not, you're not supposed to have any, usually you don't. I mean, usually um, you can do, of course, but uh, I've recovered from alcohol. Uh, you, you're an alcoholic and you've got problems. And if you want, I can sponsor you and help you to let go of your addiction if you want to want to help. And then you, you try and selflessly help them and others. That tends to, that brings up the thing of, of course, uh, what we call um, love with, love is, a, love is really a form of service. There's no vested interest in it. And there's no baggage. Usually this is a stranger, an alcoholic off the street. You just help them. And usually you don't really want the, 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 the person's house, you don't really want anything from them. So it's just really, and also even if they say to you, uh, you do have compassion because you've been through that situation yourself, so you do kind of know because you've been through the grind. When they sort of babble on about, you know, I can't stop drinking, I'm killing myself, my wife's leaving me, uh, whatever, and you, do, you go, yeah, I understand that, and uh, that is a form of compassion, but you don't get hooked into their drama. So you kind of like infinitely strong love there, but you, you're not, there's nothing there that, like uh, when I'm sponsoring, that gets hooked into their drama. There's compassion there. Yes, I understand, you know, it is pretty awful being an alcoholic and having to stop and losing everything. I've been there, that's, that's awful. So there is a sort of compassion, and they know that you've been there. So they can't say you're not genuine, but there's no attachment to their drama. It's like I got, you got through the drama, and you just helped them, and it's kind of like, a non-intense experience. That's because I have no vested interest in getting anything out of them or wanting anything out of them. There's no hooks. Uh, quite often in those type of relations, mostly. I mean, if, if a vested interest starts to be there, let's say they're famous and I want them to give me a free Rolls Royce, then of course the relationship becomes mm. very, very sick because, you know, that's not a good dynamic. But usually if they're just an alcoholic and they're down and out and you're just trying to help them, there is nothing you want, and you can actually be very compassionate. And you, I was learning compassion, really, identifying, I've been through that, it is a horrible thing. But there's no attachment to the drama. So it's quite a kind of a neutral, loving thing, where I stay in a very high spiritual energy. But as soon as there's anything that I want to vested in outcome from them, so having that with a, with a sponsee, with an addiction, is very easy. Having that attitude of unconditional love with my mother, was absolutely, it didn't happen. It was like it was hard work to not have any outcomes or expectations of my mother. I was loaded with uh, uh, wanting outcomes and expectations of what I expected her to be. So I could not, like, if you were to suddenly say to me, and I could see the thing, like I can easily have compassion for someone with an addiction problem when my ego hasn't got any agenda and there's nothing in there. I just want to genuinely help them. But when there was some kind of, <clears throat> uh, a lot of baggage or a lot of outcomes, like my mother is already a loaded word for me, 
It's like mother should be like a savior type of thing, and should be like this and blah blah blah. You know, so I was putting all this crap on her, and I could see that when I was basically what the twelve steps are doing, they're teaching you how to have compassion for another individual, but not have an agenda. So it's kind of like, um, for me, the thing is, if you get if I get involved in, in their drama, then that's a very low field because they're in drama and I'm in drama. Uh, that's like two people in dramas, and there's no light in that, in that situation. So I realized with my mother, it was kind of obvious, and with all the teachers I'd done, that the only reason I have pr problems having compassion for my mother, and actually having love for my mother, which is love without an agenda, or any attachment, or any baggage, uh, like I felt I could easily do with just a, a person I don't know, who's been through the mill and trying to share my experience with them, and how to overcome addiction. Well, I had to be that way with my mother. My mother is not my mother. I mean, that's, that's a loaded, baggaged word. There's lots of outcomes and expectations. I had outcomes and expectations of her tone of voice, of her facial expressions, what she could say and she couldn't say to me. I had all this crap I was laying on her, and I saw that, that you're so far away from being unconditionally loving to her. It took me five years. So it's the thing of, like, a mother, I put a lot of baggage. If I had a... No, if I was to ever have a girlfriend, <laughs> you know, girlfriend would be something that, for me, it's like, that's a, that's a huge word, that's a, a loaded word, you know, it's like, you know, to be programmed with all the Hollywood movies, you know, that uh, a woman should be someone who's going to save me from my misery, you know, and give me comfort and whatever, and be something like a Hollywood movie. So if I was to project all that crap onto them, and they weren't that, you know, and they're supposed to be this perfect person that's saving me and rescuing me and being the ideal girlfriend all the time, then uh, that would, uh, you know, like to have compassion for that person, I, I find it very difficult unless I cleaned up all, every single bit of junk in me. I mean, that person wouldn't even be my girlfriend. To have compassion, she wouldn't really be my girlfriend. You know, I'd be seeing something totally different, you see. Because it, uh, it, the word mother, the word girlfriend, uh, and expectations and outcomes of, you know, the ego is like an animal. It wants, you know, what about my needs? You know, I'm feeling lonely tonight. You can't be going out anywhere else and do something else tonight. You know, uh, you know, so, you know, obviously if, if I'm feeling lonely and the other person wants to go out and then I get angry uh, and then, uh, and, then I'm just, and then my ego is beating me up, why well, haven't you got compassion for her? And it's a hypothetical situation. Well, it's because I have so much of an agenda with her. You know, if I had a neutral agenda with her, then it would be easy. Also, in like 12, I think 12 <coughs> steps is quite easy. You, uh, it's quite easy to know when to let a person go when you have no agenda or attachment to them. It's like, look, uh, to get over alcohol, I got a faith in God. Uh, I prayed and meditated. <coughs> I went to meetings. I uh, helped other people, I started to be of service, I started to think of others who had the same addictive problems as me. And uh, I'm trying to do that with you, it's not working, so um, when you're ready to, to, to hold on to the solution, come back. You know, I need to work with somebody else, because, uh, you know, um, not for the time being. Uh, but you're welcome to come back when you're willing to change. So it becomes easy, but if I have a vested interest in a person, everything becomes cloudy. It's like, I think it's not working, I should let them go, but then the voice is, will you be lonely without them, you know? Uh, actually, no, they're, they're quite useful to you, uh, because you need them. Actually, you mm. need them, so you can't let them go anyway, so let's try and fix them. Even though it might be, if, if there was this detached love and compassion, then it would have been quite easy to let them go. But when there's a, see, that's the thing with having an outcome or expectation or you know, a neediness, ego neediness, or craving for the other individual, then, you know, there's a lot of junk that messes up that strong compassion and compassionate wisdom as well. You know, there's the wisdom, not just the, not just the ego attachment. So there's a difference between having attachment for an individual and having unconditional love and compassion, which is not having any attachment to the person. So there's the ego vested self-interest in hanging on to the relationship, why the ego will argue and not, and almost like create a fog for you to see clearly. Like, it's more clear when you're helping, like an addict, that you have no vested interest when it's the time to stop. You know, they're not getting well, they're not ready, 
it's time to let that go. And I've got no vested outcome in it. It's just it's, I need to work with someone else. Look, look, Henry, when you, when you feel like you really wanted to follow the solution, come back to me. In the meantime, I'm just going to be working with someone else over here that, that can sort of follow the thing. That becomes quite easy because no... But if, if, like with my mother or a girlfriend, you know, anything that I would put a lot of emotional baggage onto and get emotionally attached to, then that becomes very, very difficult. So how do I develop real compassion? Real compassion for me... Uh, actually, I'm trying to answer that in two different ways. The compassion for me, in my experience, would come from trying to develop compassion for people where there's no vested income in the first place, because I'm learning compassion there, you see. Just um, working on my stuff, I haven't got... Because you know, I have lots of experience of trying to help people with no vested outcome. Because the reason in... Before I went did spiritual work, the only reason I'd get into a relationship with anyone with, uh, would be because I get some kind of payoff. I want to get to know you because mm -hmm. there's something you can give me. I want to go to a group because these people can, can provide something because I'm in lack. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I wasn't going to groups so that I could give, my, give this abundant love there. I was in absolute pain and agony. I'm going to this spiritual group because I'm in pain. You guys have got to rescue me. That was my motive for going there. If I saw a girl, it wouldn't be like, I want to love you and be of selfless service to you and have no motives. It goes like, you know, I have all these cravings and I feel empty and lonely. And you're going to be the thing that rescues me. So uh, that would be my motive for going up and trying to pretend to be nice to them. So really I had a selfish outcome, you see. And maybe you wouldn't call it selfish. Maybe it's an animal outcome. I don't know what you want to call it. <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. But of course... Could I be? I, I wouldn't be capable of compassion to that girl, because I was empty. You see, I was empty. But by learning, what, so the thing, so I'd have to like I could see that with my mother. I'd have to let go of all my junk and all my outcomes and expectations, like like I didn't have any outcomes and expectations of the people I was helping with addiction. And then I, you know, like the people with addiction, I could I could genuinely have compassion because I'd been there, I'd been through the darkness. So I did no, but I also I, I was out of the darkness. I could have compassion for them, but not get sucked into their drama. And also, I was able to, almost like this compassion, but love, but strong love, you know. And there was wisdom there as well. So, the way to develop, and that's my answer, I think, because, um, uh, which I think is quite a, a long answer, but, I get, and it's also kind of a plug for, um, well, what am I saying on camera? Because I'm on camera. It's like, if you, if you get to a good place with the Course in Miracles, help somebody else. With the, you know, go to a group and just try and add your wisdom to the group or something. Or, go, or, or, or do something. And then you learn, you learn compassion. It's like, you know, I've got the experience of overcoming grievances. I do the Course in Miracles regularly. And you just naturally help someone who wants to do the Course. Go, well, that doesn't ha that's more difficult in relationships which you've got into in the first place because you had a motive, an outcome, or family relationships where you have an expectation or outcome of individuals. Like, you're supposed to be my brother, so you should behave better than that. Or you're supposed to be my mother, so you're supposed to be better, like this way. And you're supposed to be my girlfriend, you're supposed to be that way. So those are loaded, loaded relationships. So for me, with my, my, my relationship, I'm just using my mother because that was my, the big one for me, was that I could see that uh, I had to get to a place, and it actually is true what I'm saying. It's like when I let go of all my baggage, I could have love and compassion for my mother, you know, as, as a human being, because I let go of all my crap. I didn't want anything from her. It took five years to clean, you know, all the crap I was laying on her. And then I really, there was like a genuine love, you know, that I could actually see the life she'd have gone through. I could never see that before when I had crap in the way. So, um, it was all about me and my wounded me and what she should be giving me. I could never have compassion for her. So I can't have compassion as long as there are outcomes. But I think, you know, the, the other thing to do is... Um, uh, and I'm, having, I'm giving an answer which is not very... not an easy answer, but it's like... For me, anyway, it was like... Um, helping others where there's no outcome or expectation is a great way to learn compassion. You know, helping other and what's the best way to help others? Well, if you've transcended any difficulty in life, 
finding someone who's going through that difficulty and with no outcome or agenda at all, trying to help that person, mentor them. I think that develops compassion. I think, you know, something like self-inquiry might not necessarily lead to compassion. But all you're doing is you're sitting in your chair and going, what's observed? <laughs> well, the world's not real. I'm the observer. I can see the world's an illusion. And, uh, well, you're in pain. You, your pet cat got run over. Well, don't worry about it. You know, <laughs> it's not really a real cat. It didn't really happen. <laughs> Sounds a bit gun compassion. <laughs> Whereas, um, so, so there's, there's something else. So there's like opening the heart to the infinite, and then through through um, through. And that's the way I would do it anyway. So that's a thing. Uh, because I come from addiction, I, mean, I come from a background where it was, everything was about self-interest, you know, and fixing my emptiness. So self-interest and emptiness doesn't go hand in hand with compassion for others. And if I have some, like if, if I have, like, let's say my relationship with a person sitting on the chair, if there's any sort of self-interested outcome or expectation, it's very hard then for me to have compassion. As soon as I have an agenda, uh, it's very hard for me to have real compassion because there's something in my head saying I, I still need to maintain something to get my agenda met. So that's not really, that blocks compassion, you see. So compassion really is, uh, for me anyway, is like a helpfulness to another person with no agenda. Yeah? Uh, but it also doesn't get hooked into their drama, but it's all, there's wisdom there as well. So for me, the, there's, there's the two elements. That's how I learned compassion. I think the Christian saints, the, the Christian saints, I mean, Mother Teresa, um, St. Francis, I mean, obviously they are, that's the pathway, that's the classical pathway of the heart. I mean, sitting in a room doing non-duality work and, and self-inquiry, that's the pathway to enlightenment through the mind. You know, yeah, so you're trying to get to the infinite through just inquiring within into the observer. Whereas the Christian, you know, the, sort of the archetype of the Christian saint, le, well, let's try and love the lepers and the unlovable, and just do that non-stop. Well, of course, that's a very direct way, you know. So it'd be like, you know, because to, to, you know, do I want to help the supermodel, or do I want to help like a, a an alcoholic who's drunk <laughs> and obese and has no friends? You know, it's like. What's the fastest way to the heart? Well, the fastest way to the heart is the is the is the overweight alcoholic who has got no friends and no one wants to go near him. You know, which is what I the thing I really sort of I was watching this black and white movie of Saint Francis on Saint Francis, an old old one. I was just watching it, and uh, it struck me. Just struck me the scene. It was like there was a leper walking alone across the room. You know, he's got that leper type look like. I'm an outcast, no one will ever love me, everyone needs to stay away from me, and everyone stay away from me. And St. Francis goes up and gives him a hug, like, I would love you. You know, and I thought, yes, that's unconditional. That's kind of so obvious, isn't it? You know, the, a saint going after loving the unlovable. You know, that's, the, that's a really fast way to get to the heart. Uh, so, anyway, so... Um, I think anyone in, but you know, for me it's a thing of um, once I'm in a mesh relationship where I have lots of outcomes, it's really hard.